Hey there, everyone. As always, welcome to the channel. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out for a few. My name is Rich Sharpentier. I'm the channel host. And normally, we're talking about drones and imaging, building our small drone businesses, construction progression reporting with drones, and so much more. A lot of it relates around drones. But we also do talk about tech here and there. And just last week, I had let regular channel subscribers know that we recently picked up one of the new Mac Studios, one of the low-end Mac Studios, but we wanted to do some comparison between the Mac Studio and the Mac Mini M1s that came out over a year ago. So I'd been using one of those for over a year, and I found that for smaller models, I could actually run WebODM on a Mac Mini M1 and actually get good results with up to about 350 images. One of the reasons why I wanted to get my hands onto the new Mac Studios is because these things have a little more oomph to them. So I was hoping that utilizing one of these could become my primary drone work computer. So if I'm doing small, medium, and large sized models, the hope was that we could actually leverage the power of the new Mac Studios. So what are we talking about with the Mac Studio here? Let's go to about this Mac really quick. So this Macintosh has 32 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage space, which works very well since I've got a lot of external SSDs, no big deal there. Um, like I said, the 32 gigs of RAM, and they also have multiple CPUs, multiple GPUs. So overall, this is looking like a good system and a good possible system for doing some higher end modeling with our drones. So what I did uh, just a couple of days ago was I ran a couple of tests here on the new Mac Studio, okay? So on the studio, we had some larger uh, image sets from uh, previous flights for clients, and I wanted to get my hands on a bigger image set and give that a whirl. So right now, we're looking at the dashboard for WebODM, and let's go ahead and resize the screen here so that now all the screen is taken up by WebODM. So if you're not too familiar with WebODM, we do have other talks about it here on this YouTube channel. And we also have a video series over on Arizona Drone's Teachable site. It's classes.azdrone.net if you want to check that out. So right now we're on WebODM on the Mac Studio. I got to get used to saying the Mac Studio. And we ran a couple of tests. So the most recent test, 600 plus images. So I labeled this. Um, for the studio for comparison with the Mac Mini M1. And we ran 645 images, and that took one hour and 46 minutes. So this took a little while, but it did process. So that's a positive here for us. Um, another one that we did, Sky Ranch. This one is only 336 images. This is a project we've been working on for a couple of years. And this one came out to 32 minutes and 34 seconds for 336 images. Finally, down below that, I also had done one more test with that uh, 645 image model. And we went with the default settings on that one. So a little, a little less on the processing time. As a matter of fact, one hour, 20 minutes, 44 seconds versus the one on the top where we actually use the high resolution settings to um, do this on the high resolution settings, one hour, 46 minutes. Now, one thing, I'm gonna pull up two screens here really fast. Well, I'm gonna pull up, let's minimize this one. And I did a couple of screenshots for you here. So screenshot of what we were just looking at. Let's close that one out. Because one of the things that we have going for us now is we've got a lot more RAM. Um, we've got a lot more storage space. So I went into the diagnostics of web ODM just to see, you know, how much memory are we using out of that 32 gigs and how much storage space have we used so far? So we had enough storage space to do that large model plus those other couple of models. Let's close this preview out really quickly. And we are gonna mention Docker momentarily. All right, now we're taking a look at the Mac mini, the 600 image setup. So as you see, when I was doing this for comparison on the Mac mini, um, we'd actually processing node was set to auto, but there we go. The options, high resolution. So we selected one of their pre-set up, um, modeling applications here or uh, modeling settings, I should say, and 
for this one i set it to high resolution just like we did on the studio as well and we let this sucker run so i'm going to close that and in letting it run one hour and 56 minutes in not enough memory on the mac mini m1 i expected this so what we're finding here is that web odm does need more ram so the more images that you're putting into a model the more ram that you're going to need to make sure that the model actually completes its run so let's close this back down again and let's go back to our setup here on web odm so we had to use more ram in the case of this one because we had more images one thing this says to me is that i can probably even do a larger model so i do have another model with about 1300 images so i'll be testing that sometime this week overall though for our first part of testing with the new mac studio what i found is meeting my expectations and that is that i can actually process these models now a 645 image model run through metashape or run up against something like maps made easy i don't have any answers about that yet but if you're interested please let me know in the comments below and we'll do some further future comparisons now otherwise the installation on the studio is the same as the installation on my mini and we do have a video about that here on youtube as well so you might want to check that one out but the installation and the interface worked exactly the same i'm going to minimize the browser for a moment and i just want to go take a look at docker with you so docker is what creates our virtual environment for running web odm so we have to have desktop docker for mac os x still in order to actually run web odm now in the case of windows users uh, windows users if you've gotten web odm recently then you're probably not utilizing Docker at all. They now have a native to Windows version of WebODM. So what that means for you is you don't have to mess with Docker. But one of the things I like about Docker, I'm going to go into their settings here. We're going to go down to the resources. One of the things that I like about Docker Desktop is the fact that I can tweak the settings in here. So I could, in fact, have this go to seven CPUs for processing, processing this that should help speed things along a little bit more i've also allocated 28 gigs out of the 32 gigs of ram on this system swap space we went with four gigs because that's the maximum that i could utilize and the disk image size here is 96 gigs so plenty of room as we saw in the diagnostics that i still have a lot more space to run other large models with but if i needed to increase the disk image size for docker and for web odm i can absolutely do it here now so that stands for all of the osx setups like i said on windows hey you guys have it native to the windows environment now so your system makes those choices for you but i do like having the opportunity to make the choices here so keeping this one short today i will um i will say this to you let me pull this one back up Web ODM runs perfectly on the new Mac Studio, the lowest end Mac Studio. It can process more images than I could with only 8 gigs of RAM on that Mac Mini M1. So if I have larger models to work with, I can work with them here. So that, that sounds great by me, but um, you know, one of the things that should stand out, that Mac Mini M1 that I have only cost me $700. This particular system starts at $2,000. That's what was paid for this one. So we're talking about a lot more money. And if you're just learning how to do two-dimensional and three-dimensional modeling, and you need a reasonable cost platform to do it, that Mac Mini M1 can serve its purpose with WebODM. Absolutely. Now, you're going to run up against a wall as to the size of your models. But what we do know from here and from a lot of experimentation this year is that about 350 image models can be processed on that lowest M1. Now, if you need to run bigger models, but you still want to utilize web ODM, then yes, the new Mac studio is going to work for you well. Now, this is part of a ser series here. So we're going to be talking about other applications that I'm using on this setup 
over the next couple of weeks and months. So we're going to be talking about QGIS. We're going to be talking about GIMP for photo editing. We're going to be talking about OBS, which is what's helping us do this recording here, and several other open source items as well. And we'll be taking a look at them and running them on the Mac Studio and seeing what kind of output we get and how well each of these applications works. So this first one, of course, I had to do right away because we're always talking about drone modeling on this channel. So it's nice to know that yes, WebODM works well with this. And I already have a little, have done a little behind the scenes testing with uh, Metashape as well. And we'll talk about that in a future video too. All right, everyone, thanks for stopping by here today. And I hope that uh, you're interested in this series. If you are, be sure to like and subscribe down below as we start going through this new Mac Studio and what it can do for us for our small drone businesses.